God for Lesson 5, The Crown. The third expression of the energy of the Triple Goddess is the crone. The crone is commonly conceived of as an elderly grandmother, and she represents the last stage of life when the body is at its weakest, but psychic and magical power are at their strongest. The crone represents the height of feminine power and the wisdom and experience that come with age. She is the goddess of wisdom, magic, and spirituality, and is traditionally thought of as the patron of witches and witchcraft. The crone is the goddess of death and endings. She is associated with the waning moon, just as the maiden is associated with the waxing moon and the mother with the full moon. As such, the crone represents the ending of one cycle and the beginning of the next. In this way, she is a goddess of transformation and regeneration, the night without which there could be no dawn, the alchemical negredo, or period of decay that creates the fertile conditions for new life to grow. As goddess of death, the crone breaks down our old forms to make change and rebirth possible. Since the soul can never be destroyed, but can only change its outer shape, death must be understood not as an ending, but as a process of growth and continual regeneration. Thus the crone is not so much the destroyer as the transformer, and her work is a benefit to the soul which would otherwise grow stagnant and be unable to complete its purposes in the material world. Without the destruction brought by the crone, physical form would be immutable and thus limiting rather than empowering to the soul. In this sense, the crone might be compared to science's black hole, constantly swallowing up matter in one place only to spit it back out in a new form elsewhere. This aspect of destruction is one reason why the crone is often regarded with fear. Because we readily perceive the destruction of the old form, but rarely see the emergence of the new one, we are afraid of change. And so for many the crone goddess is a fearsome and terrifying deity. But this should not be so to the Wiccan, who should strive to understand the crone's inner mystery of rebirth and regeneration. As well as a goddess of death, the crone is also a goddess of wisdom and of secrets revealed. The crone rules all of the arcane arts and, as goddess of the other world, is patron of the higher powers of the soul. It is in this sense that she is patron of witchcraft. But here, too, the crone is sometimes perceived as a terrifying figure, for the path to wisdom is not an easy one, and the seeker is confronted with many challenges along the way, chief among which is the need for self-knowledge. Nothing does more to empower us and further our psychic and spiritual growth than knowledge of self. Yet it is often the case that few things terrify us more, because in knowing ourselves we must in time confront and heal every weakness, every regret, and every psychic wound we have suffered. And most of us would rather just bury these. This path of self-knowledge is the very heart of true Wicca and is the demean of the crone. It is as the patron of the quest for self-knowledge that the crone most often figures in mythology. Whether as Baba Yaga in contemporary Russian folklore, or as Venus in the story of Cupid and Psyche, a central myth of the crone has a youthful protagonist seek her out, in search of some boon, great or small. The crone, who is usually portrayed as living far from the mundane world, as true wisdom often does, always agrees to grant the boon that is sought, but only if the protagonist can fulfill a series of seemingly impossible feats. Many others have failed before the frightened protagonist is told, yet, usually with supernatural help, commonly in the form of the animals, this protagonist succeeds against all odds and gains the desired boon. From this myth it can be seen that, while the uninitiated may view the crone as a fearsome and terrible goddess, those who confront her mysteries without fear will invariably find her their benefactor. Here follow several examples of the goddess as crone. Baba Yaga Baba, or Grandmother Yaga, is the Russian form of the crone goddess. Yaga figures in many contemporary folk tales in which a young protagonist seeks out or stumbles upon her enchanted cottage and asks a boon from her. 
receiving it after fulfilling many near-impossible tasks. Baba Yaga is portrayed as an ancient and wizened witch who flies through the air in a magical mortar and pestle, or sometimes on a flying horse, and has power over the elements. Yaga lives in a remote forest in a magic cottage that walks around of its own accord on giant chicken's legs, and her home is guarded by a fence of stakes on which are mounted the skulls of unsuccessful seekers, the protagonist's own previous lives. Hecate Hecate is the ancient Greek form of the crone goddess. Associated with the moon, Hecate was often shown with three heads or faces, or as three women standing together. This was to represent the moon's three phases, and in this sense, Hecate has aspects of maiden and mother as well as crone, though it is primarily as crone that she is worshipped. Goddess of prophecy, magic, and witchcraft, Hecate is worshipped at the crossroads and is considered a queen of the other world. Her principal symbols include the key and the torch, as her wisdom can unlock and illuminate all mysteries. Hecate's totem animal is a black dog. In medieval Europe, Hecate was called Dame Hecat. Kali Kali is the most famous Hindu example of the crone form of the goddess. Kali is usually shown as a jet-black goddess with many arms, wearing a necklace of skulls that represent the cycle of death and rebirth. Sometimes also she wears various other human body parts, or serpents, as part of her costume. Her blood-red tongue is shown extended, like that of the Greek Gorgon. This shows her regenerative aspect. Kali's consort is Shiva, the destroyer, and she is often shown standing or dancing upon his recumbent body as goddess of death and transformation. Morian Morian, the Irish name of this Celtic form of the crone goddess, means queen of ghosts, emphasizing her role as goddess of the dead. Other versions of her name, such as Morgana and Morgane, make reference to the sea, which in insular Celtic religion is associated with the other world. Morion is a goddess of magic and sorcery, and is sometimes shown as ancient and withered, or conversely as preternaturally beautiful. Morion is also the goddess of sovereignty, and in many myths she approaches a would-be king or hero in her aged form, demanding sexual favors. When the hero makes love to the aged woman, she transforms into a beauty in his arms, and prophesies his rise to kingship. Morion has different consorts in different areas, including both the Dida and Mananan Macleod, both gods of the other world. Morion figures in the myth of King Arthur as Arthur's magical half-sister, who is sometimes a friend and sometimes an antagonist, but who in many versions ultimately conveys Arthur to the magical realm of Avalon. The Other World. Tlaxalteutl. The name Tlaxalteutl means refuse eater, because this Aztec crone has as one of her chief characteristics the quality of consuming outmoded forms and transmuting them. At the end of their lives, Aztecs could make a confession to Tlaxalteutl, who would cleanse their soul of any wrongdoing which they related, allowing them to enter the other world without regret. Goddess of magic and sorcery, Tlaxalteutl was sometimes portrayed riding naked on a broomstick and wearing a horned headdress, revealing a similarity of archetypes with European witchcraft. As a goddess of death, Tlaxalteutl is sometimes portrayed as an old woman, but she also has aspects as maiden and mother goddess, and so is sometimes portrayed as a seductive beauty. The most famous image of Tlaxalteutl shows her in the act of giving birth. 